We are in Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 today. We're um, in this verse that says, giving thanks to God the Father, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Um, by probably the next video, we're going to finish up this section between verses 9 and 13, where Paul's telling the Colossian believers, this is how I'm praying for you, asking that you would be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. I want you to understand what the will of God is so that you can walk in a manner worthy of the Lord and be fully pleasing to him. And he says, this is what that looks like, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing or growing in the knowledge of God. He says, being strengthened with all power according to God's glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. And now he says, giving thanks to the Father who's qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. In verse 13, he says, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and he's transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Today, we're going to focus primarily on that verse 12, where he says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. And giving thanks, I mean, this is just a theme throughout the, the Bible, right? And through, especially throughout the New Testament. And Paul is constantly reminding us to give thanks. He wants us to be giving thanks to the Father. We should be living lives of thankfulness. Thankfulness for all that God has done and is doing for us and has done and is doing for the people around us, our families and our friends and our neighbors, our co-workers. I'm just giving thanks, you know, giving thanks as, as we're walking in all the good works which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And we're bearing the fruit of the Spirit as we walk in all these good works and they're being manifested in our lives toward the people around us that we're just thanking Him. Um, through all of this, as we're growing in our faith, increasing in the knowledge of God, becoming spiritually mature believers, that we're just thanking him, thanking him for his work that is deep within us, even when that work of sanctification might be painful in our lives. But we're just thanking him that he's drawing us deeper, that he's drawing us closer, that he's making us more and more into the image of his son and making us um, closer to him, into his likeness. And then as we're being strengthened with all power, as he is just pouring into us his his strength according to his might so that we can endure and have patience in this world through all the ups and all the downs, all the goods and all the bads that we can just endure this and have patience and we can do so while also bearing the fruit of the spirit of joy, being joyous despite the fact that sometimes we go through hard things, thanking the father that he allows us to be a light in the world that's filled with darkness. There's darkness all around us, but through our endurance and patience, Patience with joy as, as we show forth the reality of this work of salvation in our lives. The, the reality of the presence of his spirit within us, giving us strength to endure and to keep being hopeful and to keep being loving, to keep having peace, to keep being joyful despite everything we go through <clears throat> and, and being able to bear witness of the reality of the resurrection of Christ through our lives. Like, just thank you, God. Thank you that you, be, or you allow me to be a part of this work that you're doing in the hearts of other people on this earth, giving thanks to the Father, he says. And then he gives us one more reason for being thankful. He's qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Okay, what is this inheritance that Paul's talking about? And we got to go all the way back to Genesis. It's, it's all the promises. It's all of the promises that God has given to his people um, throughout all of the generations <clears throat> from Adam to you and beyond. Okay, all of the promises that he's given to his people. In Abraham, remember God promised Abraham. Um, he changed his name from Abram to Abraham and just declared of him, you're going to be the <clears throat> father of many nations. I'm going to take from you an old man that is beyond childbearing years and your wife who is barren and also beyond childbearing years. I'm going to give you a son, a son of promise. No, it's not Ishmael. No, it's not going to be the, the son um, that you have or daughters later on. It's going to be Isaac. And I'm going to make my covenant with you and through him, through your seed, through your offspring, all the nations of the world, of the earth will be blessed in you. He's, I'm going to give you all of this land for, for, an, for an everlasting 
possession. Okay, he gives all of that to Abraham. And then he repeats that promise with Isaac. And he repeats that promise with Jacob. And then it's funny because in Galatians, we see that we are included within that promise. He says, there's therefore now neither Jew nor Greek, uh, slave, there's no nor slave nor free. There's no male nor female for all are one in Christ Jesus. And if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's offspring and heirs according to the promise. What promise? all the promises that he gave to Abraham, okay? Then there was David. God promised David. It says, when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. He, uh, he promised David that his offspring would never cease to sit upon the throne of Israel, okay? That he would sit his offspring would sit upon the throne and he would give him an everlasting kingdom. Okay, well, that promise is fulfilled in Christ, right? Yeah, promise was, yes, Solomon came in next and he built the temple. That temple was eventually torn down. His kingdom was destroyed. Uh, Israel was taken away captive into Assyria and Babylon. But his, his covenant with him is everlasting and eternal. And he brought Jesus through the line uh, of David and brought him into the world. And he is the one that Daniel talks about in chapter seven. In Daniel chapter seven, he says, I saw the night visions and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like the son of man. And he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. We see that applied to the saints. Later on in Daniel chapter 7, he says, but the saints of the Most High, verse 18, shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. We see these promises of God that he's directing to individuals in the Old Testament, that these promises then get applied and received by the saints of the Most High God. Well, the Jewish people always thought, well, the saints are us. That's us. We're the descendants of Abraham, right? Again, Galatians says uh, there's now neither Jew nor Greek. There's no slave. There's no free. There's no male. There's no female. All are one in Christ. And if you're Abraham's um, if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The promises apply to God's people, both Jew and both Gentile, both slave, both free, both male, both female. His, uh, his uh, promises apply to all who are in Christ, who are Abraham's offspring and heirs according to the promise, the true Israel of God, it also says in Galatians. Okay, and then we see Peter talking about this, right? He says, but according to his, it's talking about God, according to God's promise, we are awaiting a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells, okay? So this is what we're waiting for. This is that promise of our inheritance that we're waiting for on this earth as we live this life, as we wait for the coming of Christ. We're waiting a new heavens and a new earth where righteousness dwells. And I want to take a minute. I know this is a, supposed to be a short video and this passage is kind of long, but I want to read this to you because I want you to see how the Bible describes in Revelation the coming of this kingdom and what that looks like. It says in Revelation 20, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated upon the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. We skip down to verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal 
crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and the gates 12 angels. And on the gates, the names of the 12 tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And on them were the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And we skip down to verse 22. And I saw no temple in the city. For its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean, unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. This describes that eternal kingdom in the new heavens and the new earth where righteousness dwells that we are looking forward to. This is the hope of our redemption in Christ, that Christ will return. He will glorify us. We will be made like him by the power that enables him to, to uh, gather all things unto himself, to redeem all things to himself. Okay, he's going to make us like him and he's going to make a new heavens and a new earth where righteousness dwells and we're going to live and dwell forever in, in fellowship with God Almighty in Christ in the new heaven, the new earth, in the new kingdom. Okay, so he says, um, giving thanks to God the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. I like to point out how the next verse is going to say he's delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, right? The saints in light, the inheritance of the saint in eternal light. There's no night there. Everything is lit by the glory of God. The nations walk by the glory of God. There's no need for a sun or a moon. There's no need for any other source of light because he is the source of all light and in him no darkness dwells, nor dares to dwell, nor come near him, right? We are qualified to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. And finally, what does it mean that he has qualified us? Okay. Give thanks to God the Father, okay, who's qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. What it means is that we've not qualified ourselves. Okay. And I know I've repeated this multiple times throughout this study in Colossians and also in the one through Philippians that I did before this. Okay. And I feel like I'm being repetitious here, um, but I feel like I need to keep saying this over and over again. It is not us who qualifies us to receive God's inheritance. It is not us who qualifies us to receive his salvation, his adoption as his children, to be sanctified um, into the image of Christ. It is not us who will uh, justify, sanctify, or glorify ourselves. It is not up to us. And yet there's still some small part of your soul and mind that says, yeah, but, yeah, but what if I don't go to church every Sunday? What if I miss a Sunday? What if I um, don't read the Bible faithfully enough? What if I forget to pray over my meal or I forget to pray over here or I forgot to ask forgiveness the other day? What if I, you know, what if I, what if I, 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 you don't qualify yourselves to share in the inheritance of the saint in light. I don't qualify myself to share in the inheritance of the saint in light. And we need to get this through our heads. It is not us who qualifies us for redemption or salvation or adoption or inheritance. It is God who qualifies us. It is through his son that he qualifies us. It is he who calls us. It is he who justifies us. It is he who adopts us. It is he who sanctifies us. And it is he who will glorify us on that day when he returns. It is he who qualifies us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We need to remember this, right? We are a people for his own possession. We are a chosen race, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, he says, a people for his own possession, right? And, 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 and this, is, this is what he says, right? Didn't he say that? He says that we may um, sing the praises of him, who, why am I not remembering that? He's seeing the praises of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light, okay? 
Give thanks to God the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Okay, we are qualified by God to share in the eternal inheritance, the promises of God that he has made through to all the people of God, through all the history of the Bible. We get to share in that because God has qualified us through Jesus Christ, right? By grace, you've been saved through faith. And this, not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not a result of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he's prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Give thanks to God the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light.